हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन लर्निंग एंड ट्रेनिंग कोर्स सो आई एम प्रोफेसर सागर बी आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग विद द सब्जेक्ट डिज़ाइन ऑफ स्टील स्ट्रक्चर एलिमेंट्स टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट मॉड्यूल नंबर फाइव द टॉपिक ऑफ विच इट इज द डिज़ाइन ऑफ बीम्स एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी सेंट अ पी रिगार्डिंग द थेरी पार्ट ऑफ द डिज़ाइन of beams we have two types of beams one of those is laterally supported beam and the other one is laterally unsupported beams so let us discuss about what are laterally supported beams its design and the design procedure as per is 800 2007 as per indian standards so laterally supported beams so laterally supported beams means the beams which are supported so that the movement in the lateral direction is not possible that means the beam is not allowed to move in a lateral direction for example we have two diagrams here one of the diagram is beam being supported by to the slab so slab is supported by the beams and the slab will not allow for the beam to move in a lateral direction for example if this is a beam so the once the end conditions the supports are fixed so we are not allowed to move the beam is not allowed to move in the lateral direction so the beams which does not allow the movement of the uh, movement of the beam in a lateral direction are called as laterally supported beams so this is are the two examples of laterally supported beams so let us study today what are the design steps involved and how the design is being carried out as per the indian standard procedure given in the guidelines of is 800 2007 so i have listed out the steps so the steps involved for the design of beams are so first step is load calculations second step classification of section third step check for deflection fourth step check for moment of resistance for the beam fifth step check for shear sixth step check for web buckling seventh step check for web crippling so let us discuss today what are the steps involved and just briefly i will explain you in Uh, one or two minutes like how these are carried out so for our lecture today we will be discussing only load calculation classification of section and check for deflection so let us start so step number 1 load calculation a question will be given wherein the loading condition and the loads acting on the beam member will be given the loads may be udl it may be a point load or it may be a combination of both and the support conditions are given so in load calculations what are we doing so we are calculating the loads and we are most probably the most important we are calculating the bending moment and the shear force once we calculate the bending moment and shear force in the load calculation we are going to calculate the plastic moment required so we will be calculating plastic section property okay so that we can choose a section so what is our second step second step is classification of section that means what we have to select a section and we have to classify it as accordingly given in is 800 okay then so say once we calculate in the load calculation bending moment and the shear force and the plastic movement that is the section uh, plastic section so we will be uh, calculating the required zp required that is section plastic section moduli depending upon that we will choose a section so let us say if we choose a i section so let us discuss about the i section because it is the most economical steel sections so once we take the i section we have to classify the assumed class section into the 
classification given by the IS 800. So the classification as you all know we have four classifications the first one is plastic section second is compact section third is semi compact section fourth is slender section. So we have to classify how we have to classify is depending upon the geometrical dimensions of the section that is geometrical properties. Once we finalize the section we have to check that beam section for different conditions. So one of those is check for deflection where we will check the deflection in the beam. So we have something called as permissible deflection also. So we have to calculate the permissible deflection and then using the loading condition and the given loads and the support condition we have to calculate the deflection in the beams. So we have to match with it and we should see that the beam which is being designed should not exceed the permissible limits. So the permissible deflection is given by span by 250. So next is check for movement of resistance of the beam. Here we are going to calculate the bending strength in the beam according to the IS 800 2007 which will be the beam will be checked for the its bending strength depending upon the choosing section. So next is check for shear. The beam will be checked for the shear forces acting on the beam. Next is check for web buckling and check for web crippling. So this web, this both checks are for the web portion. So as we know this is the flange portion and this is the web portion. So we are checking this for the web portion. So what happens in the web as the dimension you can see of the web is very thin section as compared to the width of the member. So what it will, it will be prone to buckling as well as crippling. So just I would like to demonstrate what how and how it will be acting. So for example if I take the web portion as a refill. So I will demonstrate it for you. Take it as a refill and this portion so this portion whatever is there is being loaded. So once we load it will happen that the refill will bend. So this is nothing but the buckling. So we have to check the beam that is the web portion so that it does not buckle as well as it will not cripple. So these are the steps followed in the design of laterally supported beams. So let us study one by one how and what guidelines are given in IS 800 2007. So in the today's class we will just discuss loads calculation, classification of section and the check for deflection. In my next class we will be dealing with the rest four part. So let us start. Okay. So according to the steps involved in the previous page, the first point was load calculation. So load calculation is nothing but just calculating the bending moment and the shear force and the plastic section or plastic moduli required. So that will be calculated depending upon the given bending moment that is given bending moment is calculated with respect to the given loading and with respect to the support conditions. In the first step we just calculate moment then the shear force and the plastic moduli of the section. In the second step that is classification of section we are going to classify the section into parameter that is the section which we have chosen belongs to which section classification. So there are four section classification that is plastic section, compact section, semi compact section and slender section. This is the overall outline view of how it has been classified. So I have taken an I section as you can see here. Here I have denoted the notations. So the depth of I section is taken as H that is H is depth of a section. Then this portion that is width that is this one and this one. So it is called as breadth of the flange. Then the this member is a web member the thickness of which is called as thickness of web given by TW. Then we have thickness of flange which is given by the notation TF 
and b outstand of flange so this is very important that is b so you can see this b is nothing but outstand what is this outstand of the flange it is nothing but how much portion of the section is unsupported and is being outstand so you can as you can see in this flange portion from the center this half is outstand so b being the outstand of the flange so let us discuss according to the code book how they are going so this is just a general view what i have given so just see here page on page number 17 and 18 this is uh, gives the guidelines for the classification of section so let us see in the code book what we have there so this is is 800 2007 and this is the classification of cross section you can see here the first classification class 1 being plastic the second being compact the third being semi-compact so fourth being the slender so, so page number 17 is to give this classification but now we have a section over here now we have a section over here which we have chosen so we have to classify in this that this section belongs to which so for that purpose on page number 18 that is on page number 18 i said under 2000 we have a table which is says limiting width of the thickness ratio this is used for classifying the section along these parameters so what is important for us is we should understand we have to find out the ratio that is this ratio first that is against compression element outstanding element of the compression flange roll section b by tf so we are interested in this ratio b by tf and the second one is for the neutral axis at mid depth that is d by tw now let us see here in the diagram so we have d we have tw we have b we have tf how do we get to d however we know the total depth is h so we will just deduct thickness of flange that is upper and below fiber so we will get d so that is h minus 2 tf epsilon epsilon is nothing but 250 by f i raised to half now from where i have brought it it is from the note number 2 as you can see the note number 2 epsilon is equal to 250 by f i raised to half So, so epsilon formula is given in the table number 2, note number 2, epsilon is equal to 50 by fy raised to half, which is usually 1 because fy is usually 250 by 250 newton per mm square. Next, so what I have done is I have prepared a table which will be very easier for you for identifying which is that section. This I have taken from the same portion that is from here that is roll section ratio b by tf this this part this row and the neutral axis depth and the, this row the same thing i have written it here so ratios are b by tf t by tw so you can see ratio d b by tf and d by tw so epsilon is already one here so this is the classification once we have the section we will find out two ratios we will consider two ratios that is b by tf and d by tw where are this b by tf is nothing but b is this divided by thickness of flange so this portion is related to flange only the next is d by tw d and tw so this is with respect to web so these two rows are being differentiated with respect to flange and web so the ratio of flange components ratio of web components so b by tf if it is less than or equal to 9.4 epsilon then it is called as a plastic section if b by tf ratio is in between 9.4 and above 9.4 and below 10.5 then it is called as compact semi compact above 10.5 below 15.7 is called as semi compact and anything above this ratio is called as slender similarly for the web if the ratio is less than 84 epsilon it is plastic 
if it is in between 84 and this portion then it is compact if it is less than 126 and above this then it is semi compact and anything above this is slender so this is how the classification of section is done so let us discuss the next parameter that is deflection of deflection check so check for deflection so permissible deflection that is allowable deflection is span divided by 250 so however we will have the span in the beam so that is nothing but span by 250 is a permissible that means whatever you are going to design should not exceed this limit and these are the deflection for some standard cases so these are the standard cases which i have drawn it may not be necessary that always these will come but i have just made an attempt so that for standard cases you will get the deflection so for this that is simply supported beam with udl this is the deflection similarly for a single point load with simply supported is this this is a cantilever with udl is this with the cantilever with the point load is this and two point load system is there but we may get a combination of these or we may also get a different numerical so we have to deduce so these are the formulas which you can note down but i would like to tell one thing whatever for example this is simply supported beam with udl the deflection is 5 by 384 into wl raised to 4 divided by es into i so this l is nothing but the span okay this w is nothing but see i have written a note the load w should be a working load what is this working load that is the unfactored load that means the load which is given that has to be taken not after multiplication of the factored load so this we have to check in the deflection check so the for the given uh, question for the given span you need to calculate the allowable deflection and in the beam you calculate the deflection and check whether it is below this or not it should be below this if it goes above this this deflection then it will be failure so we have to check for deflection so we will only have the uh, today's lecture up till here only that is for check for deflection just in two minutes i would like to revise once again so you can see i have discussed with the three components load calculation classification of section and check for deflection in my tomorrow's class we will discuss about check for movement of resistance check for shear check for web buckling check for web crippling and later we will go for the design numerical so points to be remembered for this lecture so these are the steps involved especially in the classification of section remember the table in IC 800 that is on page number 18 which is being used for classification that is this one so we have to identify the ratio b by tf and d by tw so this row and this row gives us the classification of section whether it's plastic compact semi-compact or slanter and in in deflection remember that we are going to calculate the permissible deflection as well as the deflection in the beam and we are going to check it so thank you for today so i would like to make a proposal that you all students just take IS 800 2007 and the steel table and go through page number 18 and 19 for this portion and just go through the section so your quiz will be depending upon these two only and in the tomorrow's lecture we will discuss about the next four points thank you thank you one and all